Johnny, his personality, humor, and talents fitted animal magic like an expensively tailored suit. Here you go. Get the cool. Bill, however, had to spend a few years in the natural history equivalent of ready to wear. But his persistence eventually paid off, and Bill got his own three-part series in 1985. It was about the birds of New Guinea and was called Oddy in Paradise. I think Oddy in Total Hell would have been a slightly truer title. Recently married to writing colleague Laura Beaumont, Bill had convinced himself that combining his first wildlife presenting gig with his honeymoon would be a practical solution. We just got married and Bill said, how do you fancy a trip to New Guinea? And I thought, oh, exotic, you know, great island, great place, very exciting, that'd be marvellous. It transpired pretty soon after that that he was doing a documentary in New Guinea. Bill is in his element, of course, because he loves this. This is where he likes to be, so he's at one with nature and he's, you know, in the trees and seeing all the insects and the birds firsthand. But to me, it was a bit sort of like, you know, I don't like insects. I'm really quite scared of insects. And the insects are huge. And we're supposed to sleep on this mountain in sleeping bags with this little bit of plastic over our heads. I'm trying to go along with it. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm married to a wildlife person. And like, you know, this is truly adventurous. But there's a little bit of me going, I'd really like to go to a, a nice hotel, you know, and have some nice clean sheets. I don't think Laura enjoyed that bit much as a honeymoon. And I didn't either. And... Just to add insult to it, we went, I went the longest period I've ever been without hearing or seeing a bird. Times like this, I just wonder, is it worth it? If I see a dodo, perhaps it is. I'm going to start a checklist of birds I see people wearing. So there's a sequence where I'm talking to a New Guinea tribesman and uh, he's very impressive, you know, and he's got this huge headdress on and he's got these feathers over here and he's got other feathers which are stuck in his nose and he's got this, um, looks like a, a bone, you know, through his nose and all this sort of thing and these strange feathers. And I'm explaining to the camera where these feathers come from and what animals and what wasn't revealed <laughs> to the public was that the long feather, fe the long feather which is meant to come from the head of the King of Saxony bird of paradise, was actually cut out of cardboard. I uh, probably learned how to do it on watching Blue Peter or something. The feathers on his head, which were some cockatiel or something like that, were all stuck in with chewing gum, and the bone through his nose was actually a kebab skewer. The bloke was actually a bank manager, and he just dressed up like this at the weekends for BBC film crews, who were only too willing to. To, to film him. Presumably he didn't dress like that in the bank, although if he did, I, I wish my bank manager dressed like that. There were other rather weird things about it that occurred, actually. There was, it got quite dangerous, but we didn't realise how much danger we were in at the time, because one of the native porters was... Um, he was ill, and they told him to go back down the mountain, and he never got back. He was found dead a few days later. And the New Guinea way is um, payback, which is eye for eye, tooth for tooth, in this case, life for a life. And we were in serious danger. We didn't know it at the time. Apparently what happens if one of the New Guineans die, they are perfectly within their rights to kill you. So, OK. And this lady who was doing the research up there, apparently she went off to do some bits and pieces and a guy jumped out from behind a bush with a knife and threatened her and said, this is the New Guinea way, you know, and they, he was going to kill her because the native bearer had died. So we had to skittle off down the mountain as quickly as possible. So it was, it was pretty scary. It's a pretty scary place. The honeymoon you'll never forget and how to guarantee that you get an, another honeymoon for the next five or six years <laughs> until you... That's payback. That's Laura says, this is payback. This is payback. You gave me the worst honeymoon anybody could have. I want a much better one every year for the next five years. Sweet, sweet, the memories you gave to me can be... Bill's career as a birdman for television didn't exactly take off after the New Guinea experience, and he was consigned to the natural history wilderness for a few years. It's not at all funny. I hope our child grows up to be a serious polar bear. I think it's almost a shame that it's not thought of as PC to anthropomorphise animals anymore. I mean, it's, it's 
funny. <laughs> you know, I personally don't see what's wrong with it. And, and sometimes when we're filming, we see an animal, we also desperately want to put a voice on it. I think we all do do it. I think even, even Sir David must have been tempted to put a voice on his gorillas or something like that, you know. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. Yeah. Like your baby. <laughs> like yours. Is there a leader giving instructions? OK, lads, into V formation. The ones on the right drop down, ones on the left, up you go. Ones in the middle, go into the lead now. Constantly changing, absolutely mesmerising. After New Guinea, Bill spent 13 years slogging away on the TV circuit before emerging as the Elvis of ornithology with a series created by fellow birder and producer Stephen Moss. The first show we ever did, Bill and I together, was called Birding with Bill Oddie. Very good title there. And we turned up at a reserve called Minsmere in Suffolk and we had four days to film the whole programme with two cameras. So we really had to do it the way a birdwatcher would. That's the sort of time a birdwatcher would spend out at a nature reserve. So we went there and we set Bill off and we started looking for the birds and as he saw them, we filmed him and another camera filmed the birds and we got it all back to the editor and cut it together and miraculously it all worked it, and it felt very natural. And I think the key thing was that Birding with Bill Oddie was different from wildlife programmes that had gone before. What Bill Oddie has done has shown me that bird watching is exciting and it's it's you know it's a it's a fun brilliant thing to do there's a chaffinch i can hear a tree creeper going there um blackbird is coming wren wren in the distance there with that little trill that goes through the middle of it and there's a song thrush song thrush very like a blackbird except it repeats every phrase Every little phrase again, dee 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 Bill's a brilliant birder. He's red hot on bird song. He can be out anywhere, even abroad, and he'll hear a little, you know, scratching sound, and you'll know exactly what it is. Yep. Reed warbler tuning up on the left here. That's reed warbler. The sedge warbler, though, is all excitable. They go, There you are. A little burst, you know, stops and starts. Never gets into a rhythm. So that's the way to remember them. Reed warbler, rhythm. R for rhythm, OK? R for rhythm, whoever he was. R for English, R for ASCII, R for sixpence. There's a musical theme coming out. There you go. Impress your friends. If you walk along, I promise you, every bird watch, even good ones, will be impressed if you walk along and go, reed warbler, said warbler. Ah, reed over there. Ah, oh, sedge warbler imitating reed. <laughs> then you're in trouble. We really thought we'd only ever get one series, but the first series did get a very good audience, got over two million viewers, and we had another series commissioned, and we were a bit more ambitious, and then we had another series commissioned. And then we, to be honest, had run out of places to watch birds in Britain, so we made the suggestion that we did a programme called Bill Oddie Goes Wild, which, as the name suggests, took Bill out to watch not just birds, but all wildlife. My main thing, I have, to, I have to say, was I just knew I could maintain the enthusiasm. And I was getting a little concerned that if we can't, kept on only doing birds, that I would be pushing it, you know, to say, I'm so excited, like I've never seen this before. You know, I've filmed a bloody thing three times, let alone seen it. It's getting pretty murky. About 10 to 9. Now listen, when the first ones come, I'm going to be able to see them, but so that you can see them, we're going to switch to a low-light camera. It'll, uh, it'll be in black and white, but then that's um, kind of appropriate for bats, isn't it? This is the least spooky experience. It's just magic. <laughs> 